Adam, first from Radio Sheffield, from Belgium to Doug, from the Brownsie Chronicle, um, and then yeah. on the Yorkshire Post, we've got <coughs> North Calendar, Sky, and our own club, Club TV channels here as well. So, if, you're, if you're happy. Is it just a all in? Yeah, <coughs> just the usual. Thank you. Um, so, if we're all happy, good to go. Great stuff. Michael, welcome to Barnsley Football Club. You had more suitors than just Barnsley. Why, why was it Barnsley that you decided for the next phase of your coaching and managing career? I think um, the next move was always going to be a big move. Uh, I need to make sure it's the right one, uh, not just professionally, but personally as well. So I did speak to two or three other clubs. Um, and ultimately it came down to, I think there's a project to be built here. It seems to be a bit distorted and he knows he's pointing in different directions, but I think the the vibe that I got from everyone that I spoke to is they want to they want to they want to build it back to what it is. It's a community club, very similar to a club I spent 15 years at in, in Burnley in terms of the fan base, the size of the club, the people, um, and it's something that excited, really excited me. So that's that's why I made the de decision that I did. Clearly, you've impressed the club. What did you get from Khalid and the rest of the board in, in terms of their vision to impress you and, and make you decide that he was the right choice? Probably everything that I've just said. Um, building, but trying to, ultimately the long-term goal is to try and get promoted and sustain it. That's, that's the long-term vision. And then obviously, once you've done that, you can start looking further ahead. But that is a long-term vision. I'm a big believer in, in processes. I'm a big believer in building step by step. So the first thing is, is to try and connect everyone back together, moving in the same direction, and then hopefully it snowballs from there. And clearly nothing is guaranteed in football, but a, a three-year contract seems to suggest that the club has put its faith in you to, to deliver that kind of long-term vision. Uh, well, yeah. I've been in it long enough to realise that it's a results-based or, you know, I can't, if I, if I don't win enough games, it doesn't matter how much you talk and talk, you, you have to win games ultimately. But it's, it shows a, a little bit of uh, faith, hopefully. And you mentioned a little bit already, there is clearly a, a rebuilding job to be done here. There's been changes at boardroom level, there was a, a disconnect certainly towards the end of last season between the, the supporter base and the club. How aware of you are you about all that and the task that's ahead from that perspective? No, I've, I've come in with my eyes wide open. You know, not, I don't think anyone's trying to hood, hoodwink me or, or con me. I know there's been, I know there's been um, things going on at boardroom level, but ultimately I've, I've had two or three Conversations with the with the chairman Nirath, lots and lots of dialogue um, with Khalid. So I, I know I know there's things that are broken, and I know there's things that are a priority to try and um, to fix as quickly as possible. Does it feel like a fresh start for everyone really at the club? With changes at boardroom level, yourself coming in, clearly there will be changes in, in the playing staff too. I don't know, it's a fresh start for me, so I can't, I can't speak for everyone else at the football club. Some people might like me, some people might not. All I can do is control the things that I'm in control of. So for me, it's obviously a fresh start, it's a fresh challenge, but it's something that I'm excited and can't wait to get started. Clearly you had four very successful years at Cheltenham. Just how difficult a decision was it to, to leave that football club? Just as difficult as it was to leave Burnley after 15 years. So the reason why I made that decision, because it was a... I think we were third from bottom in League Two at the time, and the club was a mess as well. But I did—I made that decision based on my family. I went to move my uh, family back home because that's where they're from, that's where they're based. And when I say my family, I mean my whole family, both in-laws, my family, and my immediate family. Uh, this decision has been made on um, my career. So because my family is settled and they've got all the infrastructure to look after them, I can focus on my career. So that's why it's been a really tough decision. Part of the decision was. I'll always live in Cheltenham will be my, my home forever now. So if I get the sack tomorrow, I'll move back to Cheltenham. If I retire when I'm 60, I'll be in Cheltenham. So I didn't want to outstay my welcome there. Um, we've had really good success. We've taken them from a second, third, bottom in League Two to comfortable mid-table, broken, I think, won a championship which they've never done before, the highest ever league position. So it's, no matter what anyone says, whether they think it's the right decision or the wrong decision, they can't question the success that we had as a, as a football club, so I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Clearly, loyalty seems a big thing for you, having had two clubs over your entire career. It's pretty unusual, isn't it, in the world of football? Yeah, again, so it's, I think it shows that the next the next club had to be a, had to be what I think, what I think or what I hope will be the, the right move. 
I, I did have other things, not just this summer, but other things I've been sort of sniffs, sniffs and things like that, but I needed to make sure it was the right one because it is 27 years at two football clubs. is um, doesn't happen very often, I don't think. So I, I, I think I've been blessed, I think I've been lucky, but ultimately I've been successful at the two football clubs as well, which is probably why I hung around so long. What have your first impressions been of Barnsley since arriving? I think there's a, I think there's a, an excitement. I think there's an awareness, which is good for my part in terms of there is an awareness that there is a bit of a disconnect in certain parts of the town and the football club. Um, so hopefully there's the reality that it might not happen overnight, and that's not me being evasive. That's 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 the reality in it, in my opinion. Uh, but I've been, I've been, everyone's welcomed me. I'm, I'm desperate for Monday to start, so I can meet all of the players. Obviously, there's a few players in and out at the minute, but to meet the group um, and basically start getting my hands dirty. What are the expectations this season, both from the club and yourself, of what success looks like? Well, exactly what I've just said before. It's, I'm a big believer in processes. You need to get things right. Results take care of themselves. So if you, if you just focus on the result, I think you trip over. And if you look too far down into the future, you trip over. So let's get the immediate things sorted. And results are a byproduct of environment, uh, culture, coaching, all those things. So I don't, I'm not obsessed with results I should, because I believe in if I can do the things I want to do and implement the things I want to do, I think results will come as a byproduct. So if we can do that, we'll, we'll soon know to see where it takes us. But you'll understand that there'll, there'll be an expectation and a, and a hope from certainly the, the supporter base that as a club that's just come down from the championship, that's had a couple of promotions from League One to the championship over recent years, that. That will probably be the aim from their eyes for this season. It's the, the aim for me is to win the next game of football. I don't. And it, you might think I'm being. There's some big clubs in this league. Um, Ipswich, Ipswich budget was probably two or three times what ours will be this year, and they never made the playoffs. If we can put the things in place, you know, I won a championship two years ago. Not once did I say we'd win the league. It's let's just focus on the next game and, and make sure we're all right for that one. And then all of a sudden you're 30 games in and you second, third, first in the league or whatever it is. I understand there will be an expectation from the football club, I'm fully aware of that. Um, but it's my job to take care of the day-to-day -day running and again, results will, will come hopefully. How will the experience in League One last season and the teams that you've played against help you this year and the challenges that Barnsley are going to face? Well, again, like I said, it's there's sometimes when teams get relegated, there's a, oh, we'll get promoted next season. It's it's a tough league. There's two leagues within the league. So there's teams that stayed up last year with 40 points, which is unheard of, because it was so hard for the teams at the bottom of the league to beat the teams at the top half of the league. Um, and I, I repeat myself, the teams that didn't make the playoffs, you know, big, big, big teams, ex-Premier League teams and teams in Charlton and Portsmouth. So, and that's, and then I'm only talking in the top 12. So it's going to be a challenge. It won't be. It won't be a breeze. If, if supporters think, "Oh, we'll be relegated, but we just need to rock up, put eleven players in red on the pitch, and we'll win," that won't happen. I can assure you that. How helpful has Martin Devaney been in kind of talking you around the club, and is he going to be an integral part of your your first team coaching setup? Yeah, mine. He's been good. Obviously, he's lived and breathed it for well, I don't know how long it's been thirteen, fourteen years, I think. So it's it's good to have that sort of insight into. The expectation of the supporters, the people. Um, I've known Martin for well, well over twenty years now. I think we played together twenty two years, but I knew him before that as well. So he'll he'll be part of the first team setup. Um, I'll be bringing somebody in as well. So that isn't done and dusted yet. So, but I will be bringing somebody else in as well. So I think it's it's good to have continuity, but I think it's good to have um, a fresh couple of pairs of eyes and, and, and fresh ideas as well. What kind of football can Barnsley fans expect to see under Michael Good? Um, well, we've been a back three. Um, whether that's a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2, generally a 3-5-2. I like two centre forwards on the pitch. The best way I can describe it is we try and play mixed football. I try not to pigeonhole myself into... into um, we mix it up. We, we will play out from the back, but I'm not frightened of going behind as well. I understand that, that again, the need for what the supporters want. They don't want to have it at Burnley where we had we had a manager and it was, you know, we'd have 75 passes before we'd cross the halfway line and I, I understand the supporters won't want that. Um, but we will mix it up. It won't be just route one. Big, big focus on set plays as well. 
um, and ultimately try and win as many parts of the game as you can. Have an underdog mentality. So I think that's one thing we need to do. I think that is the, the spirit of the, of the town, of an underdog mentality, which is what I, I don't like that, oh, we've been rele relegated, oh, we'll just get promoted. Well, that, that, isn't, that isn't the feel of the town. Everyone's had to fight and scrap for everything, generally. And I think we, we, we need to try and get the team to sort of replicate that sort of spirit. How much involvement will you have in the recruitment process here? Because it's a head coach role and um, people have varying levels of kind of input into that. What have you been told about that part of it? I spent four hours with the uh, analysts yesterday, getting an understanding of how they work. It. A lot of it is, you know, the names that are on the list were names that were on my list at Cheltenham uh, that I know of. Um, because it's uh, ultimately it, it, it takes out a lot of the noise and emotion, but ultimately I will make the uh, final decision on a lot of them. Have you sort of kind of been given assurances about what you're going to be able to do in the, the transfer market this summer and whether players will have to leave? We know there's a, a big drop in budget from the Championship to League One to enable you to do what you want to do. I've been given no assurances in terms of because you can't guarantee things in football other than the fact that I'll probably get sacked at some point. So I've had loads of conversations with Khalid. There is obviously a restructure. There will a couple of players might have to leave. There's no there's no names of who they'll be or how much there will be or, or what there is to spend. Ultimately, I spent fifteen thousand pounds at, at Cheltenham and we were pretty successful. I'm not saying there's a lot more money to spend than that, but I don't think money's the be all and end all. If you can create all the right, I would say, all the, the right recruitment team with the right players, with the right mentality into some good coaching, I believe that you can you can get the results that you need. So, in answer to your question, I'll be given no assurances, but I'm, I'm fully aware of the situation. Are you aware of existing bids for players as you come in? Have you got as far as, as looking at players who might come in? As, uh, I'm aware of players that might come in. As far as I'm aware, there's not been one bid for a player yet. And the club has talked this summer about going for a little bit more experience as well. There's been a, a youth policy over the last few years where very few players over the age of, say, mid-20s have been in. Is that something that, that you welcome, to have a little bit more balance in the squad as you, you try and achieve something in League One? Yeah, some, a conversation I had with uh, Khaled again in terms of, obviously, the, the, the club's remit is to, to sell and, and to generate and be sustainable. But you... Sometimes when you do go on a bad run, you do need a little bit of experience just so, just to, just to lead the way. Because you've, got, you've only got 20 year olds. I mean, they lose three or four games in a row. They don't know where to look. They need to look to somebody to, to guide them who's been through it before. So it is, you know, I don't think we'll be signing five or six 35 year olds. But I think there is a realization that we, they might have to just slightly tweak, tweak the, uh, the model that was the last couple of years. So what are the next? few weeks look like, what are your priorities as you, you bed into life here at Oakwell? Uh, well obviously getting to know the players, whether there's players coming in, coming out, giving the players a clear understanding of what I expect from them. Some of them might not like it, I might ask to leave. Um, some of them might want to leave to move on to pastures new. It's not always quite that simple with the, the money in football at the minute isn't what it was, particularly at the, these levels and the championship level. Um, but ultimately, just introduce myself to the players, try and give them an understanding that I'm here to help them. You know, I, I, I need them, hopefully they need me, and together with the supporters and the club and everything like that, again, we can build something and, and start putting a bit of a feel-good factor back into the place. Just finally from me, are you excited? Yeah, um, like I said, I can't wait for Monday. You know, I've been up, here, been up here all week and looking around and watching watching games on TV, meet, meeting different people, but ultimately you know, my job isn't to sit in a suit, it's to get on the grass and, and work with the players, and that's the thing I'm most excited about. Good luck. Thank you. I told you, as a player, um, obviously when you came up eight divisions to the Premier League, I mean, that sort of journey, what, what did that give you as a, as a, as a player and that you've taken into your coaching, coaching career? I think... I think I've worked, well, the fact that I've worked at every level, I've seen every type of ego there is, I've seen every type of ability there is. Um, the reason why that happened, and I, and I climbed the leagues, is because of, I wasn't a particularly good player, but I had a good mentality. I prepared to work hard and, and get every ounce out of my ability. So that's what I've been trying to do with the players, it doesn't always work, but hopefully I can show that 
If you do it by yourself right, you can get to the levels, but don't expect to be given it. You've got to go and work hard for it. And um, you know, the players will soon get bored of me saying that. I'm a firm believer that hard work pays you back. And it might not come straight away, but long term, if you work hard enough, it will, it, you'll earn your rewards, rather than expecting somebody to just come and give you your rewards. And during that playing career, you played against Barnsley numerous times. I think what was your general impression of, of the club and here and the fans when you, when you came up against them? Uh, it was always a difficult place to come. Um, I don't think anyone particularly enjoyed coming to the Barnsley, particularly on a Tuesday night. The weather was normally pretty poor. But I, came from, I was coming from Burnley, so it's poor. <laughs> poor, poor. Uh, it, it, like I said, the feel of the fabric, that everything is very similar to, to Burnley. I don't want to keep referencing it, but I spent 15 years of my life there, so it's, it is a big part of me. Um, and you've seen what they've gone on to achieve. The first promotion was unheard of, and then obviously Daichi did it but built it. And that was with a, a, a promotion, a relegation, and promotion as well. So, was it? It was never. It was never. It was, you never went, came to Barnsley and thought, "Well, we'll just uh, we'll just rock up today. We'll roll us. We won't need to roll our sleeves up. We'll just play our good football and we'll walk home with three points." That that was never ever the case. You mentioned about bringing uh, another coach in and, and working with Burnley as well. We had uh, Tom Harbour and Joe Lamb working in the first team towards the end of last season. Will, will they stay in those roles? Well, Tom will. Um, Sort of be a hybrid, so he'll come in. He'll come in and do some, particularly more probably um, individual work with, with players um, who maybe aren't in the squad, but in with the younger ones. So he, that's the best way I can describe it. He'll be a, a hybrid between the between the 18s, the 23s, and the and the first team. And Joe, Joe will be with the 18s and the 23s. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and with the Bain, it's probably quite unusual to come to a new club that you've never been before and have someone who not only knows the club but also you played with for so long. It's quite worked out quite well in that way. Well, it works funny. Football, you know, I'd had it. I moved from uh, Burnley to Cheltenham, and the ex this existing assistant manager and the goalkeeper coach were two players that I played with as well previously. We're ten years older than me, so it, um, I've been I've been lucky. It might be lucky. It might be. I don't know whether it's fate or what, but. I know Martin is, I know his wife, I know his family, so it's um, it's nice to have a familiar face when you do walk into a completely new environment. What are the sort of fundamentals, not just in terms of playing style, but just around the club and, and in the dressing room and everything that you'll be demanding of your players from day um, one? I think that the, the first one is this, there's just no egos. Don't make it about yourself. Um, <coughs> if you make it about yourself, the, the 11 that are on the pitch are always the most important. And that, that will, they will be, always be my focus. I have to look after 30 players, but on a Saturday, they're the most important. So if a sub comes off and a sub comes on, he's now the most important. I'll do everything I can for every single player, but the moment you make it about you, it has to be a team effort. Because if the team wins, we all win. If the team keeps winning, the town's winning, I'm winning, the players are winning, because they're getting more kudos, they're getting more win bonuses, and if you end up getting promoted, that everything's a byproduct of all those things. But it always had the focus has to be on the eleven. You said it was a really tough season for the club last season, and you know, um, stats, stats not great, the new position not great. So, um, how difficult would that be to sort of move on and change the mood from that? And is that is that your your first sort of priority to, to sort of pick players up and fans as well? Well, hopefully, it's a fresh ideas. Hopefully, the players will buy into it. I can't guarantee anything, um, but it's been proven as a as a player that I've. I know what it took in, I think I had six promotions as a player, now that's irrelevant what I did as a player, but I, know, I, knew what it was, I knew what it was like in the dressing room, the feel of the dressing room. And we had that same feeling at my previous club, but finishing where we did, it was, it was a group mentality. And, and as a result of that, you know, the captain's just gone to Huddersfield. Um, so that's what I mean about being a byproduct of the team, the team, the team, individuals get recognised. Last year we saw the captain to Wrexham. So, the players will get recognised for it, but they can't do it on their own. You know, they can't. One player can't go out and beat eleven other players. So there needs to be that group mentality. You mentioned that a few players might move on. Obviously, one one Barnsley player played against England this week for Hungary. Callum Stars obviously making a bit of a name for himself. Is it realistic? Do you think to, to keep him this summer? I think it's a difficult question to ask, answer at the minute. I don't. As far as I'm aware, there's not been a bid. So there'll be contingency plans. Um, there always is at every football club. You'll always have a list. If that person goes, well, he's the person we'll go for. He's the person we'll go for. So, I think it's great. I think it's great that he's. Um, he actually
actually got released from uh, he got released from Burnley. Uh, I think six months before I took the Euro team's job, yeah. and then got into Barry's team first uh, about six months later, which I couldn't believe. So I've known about Callum for a long time. I think it's fantastic that um, the experience that he's had the other night. Did part of your job be to persuade maybe not him or some some players to, to stay and be part of your project. Um, I don't know whether it's persuading them, it's, it's giving them a clear idea of what we want to do here and if they, if they want to be part of it or not. Um, but I've been in dressing rooms where players get relegated and the whole team says, right, well that's me done, I'm, not, I'm, off, I'm, off, I'm off back to the level that I've just been from. And I said, well, you can't all be championship players because you can relegate out of the championship. So there needs to be a reality within that. The champion doesn't have a lot of money at the minute. So if the club get bids, We'll deal with it accordingly. And there's a few out of contract players as at the moment. Uh, is there any, any news on them? Are you expecting them to, to sign or be involved in training next week? Or is it? Uh, I've, I've I've not I've not got that far into it yet, so I can't um, I can't give you any details on that yet. Possibility of bringing any players in from from Shelton this, this summer? Again, it's I've had chats where, where we're, we've not got into that sort of depth. It's meeting people, meeting what people do within the club rather than. Like we're going to sign him, him, or him, or this bedroom coming as well. So it's a, it, it is invasive because I don't. It's, it's the truth. I don't know the answer to it. And last one for me. I think one player you worked with was Josh Benson at, at Burnley. Um, you know, what, what would you say about him? And looking forward to working with him again. Yeah, I, I signed Josh from uh, into the under twenty three. He got released at Arsenal. Um, very, very good footballers. I'm sure people will see. The thing he learned at Burnley was the other side of the game, the physical side and the tactical side. And obviously that's why Barnsley paid a lot of money for him. I've not seen him play much recently, but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to working with him. He will know what's coming, because I'm sure the other players have, uh, have told him that I'm exactly the same now as what I was when I was doing the 23s. I have the same demands, same expectations. So he might not like it. He might be the first one knocking the door. He wants to, say he wants to leave. But I had a good working relationship, and hopefully he's a, he understands that you know I tried to help him, and he ends up going from a free to a few hundred thousand pounds me here so it's, he's a good player and hopefully he can do that with all of us. He's probably one of the few whose confidence might, might have taken a little bit of a knock last, last season maybe didn't go how he wanted so is it kind of arm, arm around the shoulder pick him up kind of, kind of situation while also obviously being disciplined as well? Well I think it's just, just last year's gone you need to park it up can't wallow in and that's the same as someone asked me a question about Barnes in the Premier League fantastic Brilliant, his, but it's got. I'm not in mean, control of anything that happened up until now. So, <coughs> understand, recognise, and feel the hurt from last season, and feel the disappointment, and have the reality check within it that all of the players were part of the problem as well as other things that were going on. You can't pin it on other people. Look in the mirror. Why was I responsible? Did I, did I do everything I can? I don't. I can't answer these questions. But you know, park it up now because it's a positive, fresh start. There's, there's something to look forward to. There's a whole new season, so I've been relegated as well. You know, it's, it's not always been. Football very rarely goes in a straight line from A to B, or from failure to success. There's normally a few bumps along the road. So, as long as we can build a resilient team who are mentally tough and fit, it's not a bad start point. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations on the, on the job, Ryan. It, it, it's the first thing sort of fans who wants to be here who doesn't get to sort of see things like that. Yeah. Well. Until I, until I meet the players, until I get a feel for it, and I've come in on, on high alert. Yeah. It's probably the best way I can describe it. A fresh pair of eyes, but I won't be heavily involved in the training in the first week or two weeks because yeah. I'll, be, I'll be trying to get, I'll be watching players closely to try and pick up on body language, and, and I'll be having conversations with them as well. And, um, you know, it isn't, it wasn't one. One brush fits all. One, you know, one stroke is yeah. going to affect everyone the same way. So I think it's. Um, I need. To, I need to find out who. Who does want to be here? Yeah. Is the reality of someone saying, "Well, I'm off. I'm off. I'm off," because agents tell players what they want to hear. Yeah. I'll tell players if we get a bid. I'll tell them. Because yeah. I think you're best off telling the truth. Just, just be straight with people, so we know we all know where we stand. Not having people feeling sorry for themselves because that, that can bring everything down, can't it? Really? Um. I'm pretty simple in terms of I'm pretty simple full stop but um, <laughs> pretty simple in the way that I work it's it's not a bad job so come in and work with a smile on your face run around like like the eight nine year old kids out of school who all, all want to go yeah. and play for Barnsley so that's what we talk about ego and then go home 
it's not too much to ask and it's not you know you're not working six till six like some yeah. people are so and it's having just just come on with a smile on your face it's, yeah. it's, the, it's the best job in the world don't don't let that pass you by because it does and I've seen it and, and, yeah. and all these people that did it years ago and they look back and go wasted those best years of my life yeah. just trying to get them to realise that look, it's not a bad it's not a bad gig yeah is it about daily standards on and off the pitch the right sort of sort of character and driving a, a culture almost a good yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just basic habits you know be humble work hard yeah. uh, have a bit of respect for someone and have a little bit of enthusiasm we've been talking about my they're probably the four yeah. pillars that I work on yeah in terms of your own sort of upbringing with your family and everything is it in the force of that seems to be been massive in, in, in building you your character and working through you what through it yeah it's you talk about resilience I think I went to seven or eight primary schools yeah. so I bounced around and you just got to get on with it you can't feel sorry for yourself well I've, I've made all my mates are there well I've gone to the next primary school what are you going to do Something you can do to crack on with some new players. Yeah. So that's, that's sort of the way way I've been brought up. Obviously, went to school in Yorkshire from ten to sixteen. So yeah. again, I know the uh, I know what a Yorkshireman looks like. Played for Yorkshire at cricket. Played for Yorkshire at football. Ran yeah. for Yorkshire. So it's um, I know I know the uh, I know what well, like I know what a Yorkshire person looks like. So I had a mate from I used to go to school with who um, who texted me yesterday. I've not heard from him for ten years and. Him and his son are season ticket holders at Barnes now. Yeah. So I yeah, so I apologise to him in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you're finally back. Finally back in Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well I feel it's fog, I've lived everywhere, so yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's come full circle. I mean in terms of what the town of Barnsley represents and you know, values, hard work, humility and honesty, that seems to fit in with everything in, you know, in terms of your character and, and what you're about as well. Yeah, no, that's not me trying to win fans over. They're they're the, the four things that and stick enthusiasm to it as well. I think that's a, it's all about being hard working, but you dow around the place all the time. It's like, don't be a mood hoover. If you're not feeling great, you don't have to tell the world. Just come in, do the job, and go home. Say good morning, have a smile on your face. And yeah. it's, it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of positivity. Yeah. And it's not all about millions of pounds, it's about whatever you've got, using it, using it well and shrewdly, isn't it? Whatever you've got. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I think it's pretty clear that the club isn't gonna break the bank to try and almost bet the ranch almost, it, that, that isn't going to happen. But there's, there's many ways, there's many ways, success look comes in, looks in many different ways. So we're not Man City, we're not, yeah. we're not going to do that. So you need to find a different way. So build a culture, because there's some good players here by the way. Yeah. You know, there's, there's not, let's not forget that. They might have had a disappointing year last year, but there's some, there's some seriously good players. So I think there's something to work with. And um, what would you say you in, you know you, you sort of footballing influence would have been massive on your career and you mentioned you know Sean Dice and that was about building a together set of players organised strong and really good human beings as well. Yeah, uh, Steve Cotter was a big influence on me earlier uh, in the early part. Of the, in terms of my managerial career, the way that we play that's sort of that's sort of mine. But you're always going to learn off people that have done it and been there. And you know John Ward is a, a mentor of mine at the LMA. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's, there's lots of good people who always want to help you. Um, I'm a young manager, I can't know it all, it's impossible that anyone can know it all anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to ask for advice and, and no way do I ever think that my way or the highway, it's, I'm, I'm open to learning just the same as players should be. Yeah. Yeah, I think I read somewhere you took Cheltenham to endurance training with the Marines or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Can Barnsley expect a bit of that in the future of players? No, that was, uh, <laughs> Because I'm from a military background, yeah. we couldn't win a game at the start. And basically, these two guys, um, they, they, get, they were ex-Marines. They came in and they helped. They helped give the players so almost like a common a common goal. Yeah. And they used language that was similar to mine, but from a different um, different environment. And as a byproduct of that, they got on a good run. We did really well. And they said, right, we'll take you for a day out in the Forest of Dean, which is Weirdly, the players really liked it. Yeah, it was um, it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Anybody from the back? Hello. Thank you. Congratulations and welcome to Barnsley. Thank you. Good to have you. It's been a long time coming. It appears to be in media. Um, beginning your job career, you wore a suit. 
results didn't quite work out and we ditched it. Will we expect the suit at Barnsley? No, this will, this will be, no, be in the bin after this. No problem, <laughs> that, that's fine. And have you been to club shop and have you got a gilet ready? Because I know you, 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 you believe in the lucky gilet, don't you? Well, no, that, 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 got, that one of the league, it got parked up. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't wear it. I am very, very superstitious. So yeah. you see me doing weird like steps and twitches and things like that. It's, uh, but I'm only superstitious if we're obviously being successful. So hopefully I'll, this time next season we'll um, I'll have some random quirky thing. That is, uh, <laughs> well, well, we won a game doing that, so it's a, it's um it's not it's not a specific. It has to be a gilet or it has to be anything else. It's just just weird basically. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Neil from Tax TV. I just want to speak on behalf of many thousands of Bouncer fans to welcome you to Bouncer Football Club. Have you had a look round Academy and been impressed with the Academy facility that we've got and can we see development to youth carrying on like Matty Wolfs and Aidan Marshes? I think um, it's a difficult question to ask. I've, obviously, I know I've, I've played against Bobby for years, so I've, I've, again, someone that I've got a relationship with. I think the facility is good. Um, and I think. I, I want to. I want to do exactly what I did in my last club. I want to move it forward. Um, you want to produce players, of course. You, you want to produce local players. The, the supporters always, they always cheer that a little bit harder for the local lad. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'll be trying to do. The a byproduct of the club that I've just been at. The the analyst has just been poached by somebody else. Uh, the academy manager has been poached by a cat one academy. The head of coaching has just been poached by another. So again, it's if the team if the team are winning, you you'll always get like a a, a, a cascade of uh, of success. So, in answer to your question, I haven't got my fingers di dirty in terms of like trawling through the academy. But I've already had to, I've spent an hour with Bobby this morning. Some of the younger lads were training, just trying to find out bits and bobs about them. So it's something that I will be I will take an active interest in. It's not I won't only be focused on the first team because I think it's I think it's part of the job personally. Thank you and welcome to Bands of Football Club. Cheers, Bands. Yeah, just a quick one for me. Um, obviously, you've spoken about how um, you've only been to two clubs in your career and um, your commitment to moving to Bands in terms of moving your family up. But obviously, this is a club where there's been lots of shopping and changing over the last couple of years. How confident are you that um, you'll get the backing long term to make this a long term project for the club as well? Um, well, the family won't be moving up. I'll be moving up. Um, they'll, they'll come and visit as and when. I'm realistic enough. You know, I can come in and every manager's going to say all the right things at the start. I'm realistic enough to know that if you don't win enough games, I'm going to get the sack. So it's it's not something that scares you. It's just the reality of the job that I'm in. But I'm also aware of the other side that if you can get it going, that's the potential that is here. You know, the, the supporters have had it before. They've had a taste of it and they want more of it. So. Going back to the very first question, it was, can you build something? Ultimately, you want to get out of the league and then stay in the next one and build again. But it needs to be, there needs to be continuity. There needs to be things put in place where it can't be. I think I'm the fifth manager in 15 years, um, in 15 months, if you include Davids in that as well. So, and not, not all for bad. Obviously one left because of success. So, I want to... I want to build something, that's what I want to do. Hopefully I'm around to do it. If I'm not, then good luck to the next person that does it. Because it's, it's, it's a great it's a great club. Wonderful. I think, we're, I think we're done. Thank you. Um, say hello, shake hands for now. Um, but we'll head out to the pitch and do a few cutaways if people